Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be doing the third installment of my top five favorite brands using a full face of that brand. And today I'm going to be using Laura Mercier. Now I had said in that original top five video that the reason that I loved Laura Mercier so much is because of their aesthetic. I feel like it's very natural. It's very... I'm going to enhance what I have and embrace my own beauty versus trying to mask it with a ton of products that kind of covers me up. Um, it's always been a brand that just embraces the natural beauty, which I absolutely love. Another reason I love La Mercier is because I, uh, I don't feel like they have conformed to the Instagram type of world of makeup. They have kept their aesthetic the same. They haven't really changed that much. And I respect them incredibly for that. And I also mentioned in my top five favorite brands that there's not a single brand out there that I love everything from. And you're going to see there's a couple of products in here that I'm just kind of eh about. And there are some I'm head over heels. But the reason that it got a spot in my top five is because as a whole and in general, pretty much everything that they come out with i'm excited to try and most of the time i end up really liking it and that's what signifies it being a favorite brand of mine so if you want to see how i got this entire look using all laura mercier products then just keep on watching all right let's go ahead and get started i've done my brows and i primed my eyes per usual i honestly have no idea what i'm doing with my eyes but I know that I'm gonna be using some kind of the Caviar Eye Stick Colors. I've talked about these so many times. Love them, love them, love them. Copper is my favorite eye crayon of all time. If you saw my little cup over here, it is full of eye crayons. Like I have tried so many different ones and copper, the formula and the color are by far my favorite. So love that one. Um, I will tell you, I've only tried one of the single shadows from Laura Mercier and it's in the color Fresco. I actually really like this color. It looks more neutral in the pan that I find than it comes off on the eye. I find it, um, it pulls a little bit of a cooler, almost purple undertone. I don't want to say purple because I know that scares people, but it does have a cooler undertone. It pulls that way on myself and my clients. I actually keep this in my kit because I find it to be a perfect color for brides, especially in the crease. So I love that. And I'm hoping to be able to wear that today. And then I'm going to be trying this out. It's not for the first time, but it is the newest product I have from all the products I'm going to be using today. And this one was sent to me from Laura Mercier and Octoly, and it's the Hidden Gems Eyeshadow Palette. I'm not quite sure if this is limited edition or not, but this is it right here. Um, it does have 12 eyeshadow colors in it, but it only has two mattes, which unfortunately is not my favorite, but all the other colors are either like a satin or a um, shimmer, and then there's one kind of I don't want to say metallic color down here. I've used probably four or five of these colors so far. It's hit and miss, to be honest with you. Um, the, some of the shimmers are absolutely gorgeous, and some of them are kind of chunky, and you really have to build them up. So we're just going to play with that and see. I really kind of wanted to play with these green colors down here. I don't know. Let's just wing it, shall we? And I might even do uh, green and purple. Who knows? I do want to start with this. So let's start with Fresco and I'm just going to put it on a fluffy brush, put it in the crease of my eye. If y'all have ever tried, I feel like I've tried another Laura Mercier palette like a long time ago. Maybe the one that's the most popular. I know it had like African Violet in it. Um, I don't, it's been so long. I don't remember what I thought about it. But if any of y'all have tried um, other palettes, let me know what you think. And if any of y'all have any favorite eye, eye shadow like single colors, be sure and let me know that too. But you can see the this fresco color, I flippin' love it. It just blends itself, goes in so nicely. It's not overbearing. I don't know if it's going to come across on camera that it pulls a little bit more cool, but it honestly is... What is that under my eye? That would be a Zeus hair. Okay. Um, it honestly is so good. So I really do want to invest in some more of these single shadows, especially if I can find a way to depot them. So if you've tried those, let me know for sure. Um, okay. So I'm not going to use copper because I feel like I use it so much on my channel. 
what else should I use? Because I do want to use some of those green colors. These caviar eye sticks stay on forever on the eyes. Like they are very budge proof. There are a couple of the colors that I have. That is Moonlight. I hope the lighting is okay. That in the middle right here is Rose Gold. And then that is Sugar Frost. Hmm, I think I'm gonna do Moonlight. Let's see. They always have like sets around the holidays, especially of these mini caviar sticks. The set that they have now, I don't know if it's still available. I'm pretty sure it is, is one to get because it has copper in it. And it's the first time I've seen copper in a small set. And it also has, I think it's got rose gold and amethyst. I don't know what other color, but it is a must have in my opinion. So this is Moonlight. I'm just going to put this all across my lid. And honestly, this could be very easily an eye look, which is why I love shadow sticks so much because you plop them on the lid. You can use your finger or a small brush like this to kind of buff out the harsh edges, put a crease color in and you're good to go. But I do want to use one of these greens. So I think I'm going to try actually called golden topaz right here. And I think the reason they call it golden topaz because it does have a little bit of a um, antique gold shift to it. So we're going to first try it on a brush. So I'm putting it on my Sedona Lace 941 and I'm just going to press it. Oh yeah, that's pretty over that shade. Now this is one of the ones that does have really good pigment as you can see. Hopefully you can see like I I'm going to put more on, but I don't need more at all. No fallout. Really easy to apply. So I'm really liking that color. It does have a little bit of a gold shift. The reason I like this color so much is because it's not like, oh, hey, I'm wearing green eyeshadow. Because rarely do I want to say, oh, hey, I'm wearing green eyeshadow. It has that hint of green, but it's got enough of a gold shift to it to not make it look unwearable if that makes sense that is really pretty i hope that color is coming across on camera i am going to actually use this black matte which is just called matte black isn't that something and i'm going to kind of do a little bit of an eyeliner with that this is actually i think this is an eyebrow brush from essence but i am if you are new or have never watched me do makeup on myself. I'm not the biggest eyeliner fan on myself as far as um, pencils or liquid or gel liner. I rarely wear liner at all, but if I do, I like to use a shadow. So it's hard to judge an eyeshadow solely based on how it performs as an eyeliner, but this is nice it didn't have hardly any fallout it's going on nicely it, it seems to be going on with the amount of pigment i want over that green shadow so if it were lacking in pigment too much i don't feel like it would go over that shimmery green very well at all and i'm satisfied with how that went so that's all i'm going to do on the eyes right now who knows if i add something at the end so let's go ahead and start on our base laura mercier primers are cult favorite the thing is, I hear about them all the time, but when you go on and look at the reviews, I feel like they're very mixed as to whether or not they make that big of a difference. And honestly, in a lot of people's minds, I think it's pretty much mixed whether a primer at all makes that big of a difference. I don't need a primer to help prolong my makeup wear. I like it to manipulate the finish or the smoothness of my skin before I put foundation on. So for that reason, I'm going to be using the foundation primer in Radiance today. This is also one that I keep in my kit because I do love the pretty sheen that it gives the skin. Again, I can't really speak. I don't know that this primer particularly helps longevity of the makeup, but I don't worry about that. The foundation I'm going to use today, the longevity of that is amazing. So you can see it just gives, it's like the 
the more subtle, I don't want to say the most subtle, but it might be the most subtle radiance in a radiance primer that I have, which is one of the reasons I love it because not all of my clients like to uh, be as glowy as I like to be. So when they say they want to be dewy, it's a whole nother thing than when I say I want to be dewy. So this gives that, um, desired finish for them, the glowiness that they want. And I still find that it comes through a little bit under the foundation. Now I don't have a corrector from Laura Mercier. I don't even know that they have it, but I am going to be using my color science three in one as always, before we move on to foundation. The more I'm looking in this mirror, the more I'm really liking that fresco color with that green. I think the coolness of it in contrast to that green is so pretty. Okay. So, I have a few different formulations of the Laura Mercier foundation. I really want to try that new one that came out, the like luminous one. So I will be getting that to try out. Um, I have talked in the past about my love for their tinted moisturizers. I have both the oil-free version and the illuminating version. The illuminating version is my favorite. Um, the only thing I don't like about these is that they are chemical sunscreens. I've talked about that before, not my favorite, but I don't wear them every single day. So for the days that I just really want, especially this one, a very illuminated, but natural glowy sheer to light coverage look. I really do like using this. I like to mix these two together if I don't want to be as glowy or if it's in the dead of summer and I don't want to be glowy at all because I know my sweat will take care of that. I will use just the oil free. Now for today's purposes, I'm going to be using the flawless fusion ultra long wear foundation love this stuff. I keep it in my kit. It is ultra long wear. It does have alcohol in it. I'm not the biggest fan of that. I don't really wear it on myself that often, but I do love the way it looks so much that I do trust it on my clients. Um, I, in the summer wear the color buff, which is three in one, and I'm going to mix one in one in with it today, which is cream to kind of get a little bit of a lesser darkness, should you say. So I'm going to take a pump of each and mix them together. I like this because I really don't find it is heavy looking on the skin at all. But again, it has that um, long wear that I really look for in my foundation, but it's not drying either. So I find that really this could be suited for pretty much any skin type with the exception of, I'm kind of splotchy down here, with the exception of um, maybe like dry patches, like if you have visible dry patches. But other than that, it works really well for most of my skin types that I work on. I have even used this on mature skin with no issue. Um, I do find it's a great, mixer foundation. So it's one that I like to mix with others to get a desired look. So if I have like a mature client that has a little bit of uh, a drier skin, but they want to, they want to have more coverage, then I will mix some of this with like, say a pump of the face atelier foundation, which is much dewier and much more, much more suited to dry skin, but doesn't have as much coverage. And I find that it works really well mixed with that and others that I've tried too. So you can see how easy that stippled in. I think that color match is pretty spot on mixing those two together. And the coverage is, I would say, a strong medium, if not medium full, right off the bat. And it is buildable to what I would consider a full coverage. So I like the, the, it's more of a matte finish, but because I use that illuminating primer underneath, you're able to still see a little bit of luminosity show through. So I love that foundation. So I just took a wipe to get that foundation off and I've still got most of those color caviar stick swatches on my hand. That's how good they are. All right, let's go to concealer. I have the Flawless Fusion Ultra Longwear Concealer with me for under my eyes. Their secret camouflage concealer is one of the best for the face. I have used that in my kit before. I do really like that one, but I don't recommend it for under the eyes. It's a little too drying. They do have one that's just called a secret concealer that I think is more of a cream concealer meant for under the eyes, but I have not tried that one. 
This one is the newest one to the line. I'm hoping it's not too dark. I have the color 3 in. I got this when it first launched. Um, it's going to pretty much meld in with my skin tone, not really brighten. That's okay. And it's kind of a love-hate relationship with this concealer. So I love the way it looks when I first apply it. I'm not the biggest fan of how it wears on me throughout the day. I have not given it a consistent chance, meaning I will use it and then I feel like it doesn't look as good at the end of the day. So then I don't pick it up again for, you know, a few weeks when I'm just trying to rotate through my concealers. I feel like it has a strong medium coverage. I don't find it's a super full coverage. You can still see um, some of my darkness. I'm going to try to put a little bit more right here. See if we can build it up a little bit. But everybody loves this concealer. And it's one of those things that I call it the Mandy Davis effect. And it's basically everything that works for everybody else doesn't work for me. And everything that works for me, I feel like nobody else likes. Not in everything, but a lot of things, especially the more hyped up things. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to see how this wears throughout the day. See if it's any different for me because it has been a while since I've used it. And I'm going to put underneath the um, description bar, underneath the concealer where I have it listed, how it wore for me throughout the day. So we will um, keep you updated on that. Now we are going to set the concealer and I'm going to be using the Secret Blurring Powder. So this is a fairly new product. And it is, I believe, just a pressed version of their Secret Brightening Powder, which I love and have loved forever. Um, but I decided to try this one because it is obviously pressed and easier to travel with and just a little bit less messy. And I really do like it. It's one of those ones that you've, like, you can swatch it really hard with your finger and you feel like absolutely nothing comes out. It's very similar to the NARS Crystal Setting Powder. It's not as shimmery, I don't feel like. So I like this one. Um, it has mixed reviews as well, but I feel like if you use it as intended, you're going to get the desired result. So I just put it on a fluffy eyeshadow brush and set my concealer. It doesn't take a lot to set, and I just find that it's absolutely invisible under the eye, which is why I love it so much. Now, as far as powders, they have a few different options of powders. I have not tried any of their mineral line, but I know some people swear by it. Um, they have the beloved translucent setting powder. I don't like this under my eyes, but I do like it for the face. Um, I don't think you need a lot of it. I see people baking their face with it, and I just think, holy cow, what must your face look like in real life? Because it's just, I don't feel like meant for that. Um, I just set it like normally I would. And I find this helps really control oils, um, but it's not like super drying if you put it on with a fluffy brush as well. They do have one that looks just like this. It's their glow powder. I actually had that. I don't any longer. I found that it was way too glowy for me to set my whole face and it was way too big for to be an actual highlighter for me. So I didn't need something this large as a loose highlighter. So I didn't keep that. I actually sold it in a blog sale. Um, but if you want a gorgeous natural looking highlighter, that's perfect as well. And then they also have the candle glow powders, which are the closest that I have found to the hourglass ambient lighting powders. Very smooth filtered effect that they leave on your face. I like to buff with them more than I like to set with them, but I know some people like to set as well. Today I'm going to be using the regular translucent powder. And again, I'm not going to use a ton. Not only because I don't want to look very powdery, but because I don't find that this foundation requires it on my skin type. So I'm just going to dust a little bit all over. So as you can see, it did mattify a little bit of that luminosity that was coming through with the primer and the foundation. But I do find that as the day goes on, that some of that will be coming back. So... I don't find it to be drying or too heavy as long as you apply it the right way. Now I'm going to go in with the bronzer. And this is the Matte Radiance Baked Powder in Bronze 03. I love this stuff. I think it was in a favorites when I first started using it. I'm using the Wayne Goss number 11 brush. I don't know why I think I can do this with one hand. I've never been able to do bronzer. I don't have hair in my face, but I feel like I need to hold it out of my face anyways. So the reason I love this is because it's very skin-like. Um, 
because it's a baked powder, it has more of that skin like finish. The color is one of those colors that you could basically buff over your entire face for 10 minutes and it will never look like too much. It just looks like a nice, healthy warmth to your skin without looking like bronzer. And it just blends into your skin so nicely. I really, I do want the darker color for more of um, the summertime when I'm a little bit darker. The four, I think is the darkest color they have, but oh my goodness. I love this stuff too. Talked about this in a favorites as well. And it is the uh, face illuminator in indiscretion. Now, I also love the, they all look the same. The Matte Radiance Baked Powder Highlight 01. I have a couple of small ones of those. Do really love that too. Sometimes I find this a little too light for my skin, but if you're wanting a very natural, gorgeous highlight, this is one to look at. Unless you have darker skin, it might pull a little too light. This this uh, face illuminator, they have four different colors. They have illuminator palettes that has this kind of jelly formula in it. Again, this is indiscretion, and I love this highlighter. It is so pretty. Hopefully it's not too dark for me. We'll buff it out. I mean, do you just see it's so pretty and it since it's that kind of like jelly formula I was about to say you can't put too much on but I got a lot on we will buff that out it's so 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 pretty and because we're gonna buff it out and I want to lighten it up a little bit I am gonna put some of this uh, matte radiance baked powder on top because you can't ever have too much highlight we're using a matte blush so that'll help too Okay, I have two kind of blush products from Laura Mercier. The first one is the Illuminating Powder. So this can be a powder. Most of the time, from what I've read, people use it as a blush. This is in the color Mocha Spice. So it's a very light, um, very good for my more like pale, pale fair girls. Um, it's a quad. It's got a peachy color, a beigey color, a new color, and more of a pink color. But when you swatch them all together, it's a very light, I don't even know if it's going to show up, very light pinky peach color that, again, if you have fair porcelain skin, you will love this color. And then I have the Blush Color Infusion Buildable Cheek Colors. And I have this in peach. I want more of these two so badly because I love this blush. It is very sheer, which I love because I tend to have a heavy hand with really all my powder products. <laughs> I'm going to be completely honest. So it's not like, holy cow, you know, you put way too much blush on on first try. I can build it up and get more if I want to, or I can keep it like that. So I am going to use the Hourglass Radiant Light Powder to buff out. You can see I have hit Serious Pan on this. I've already bought my backup. Obviously not Laura Mercier, but it's something I can't go without. Now, if you do have any of those Candle Glow Powders, this would be what I would recommend using those for and just buffing out so that you can get rid of any harsh lines, diffuse the blush, diffuse that highlight if you put too much on like I did. And don't be like shy about really buffing because it's not gonna take away makeup. It just diffuses everything and puts a filter over your face almost. See how that just took that highlight down, the blush down to where I wanted it. That's perfect. Now, for under the eyes, I'm going to take that Moonlight Shadow Stick, which I know, I feel like a lot of y'all have asked me why I use the Shadow Stick when I'm just gonna cover it up with a different color. I feel that it makes the color more vibrant and makes it almost stand out a little bit more than not having anything to put it on top of. And it also helps keep it there longer because of the long lasting ability of this. Plus you can almost manipulate colors as well. If you want something to go a little bit warmer, you can put a warm color stick under it. If you want something a little bit cooler, you can put a cooler. If you want it shimmerier, you know, you get, you get the drift. So I'm just gonna kind of put this under my eye as a base to stick onto the eyeshadow color because I want to put more of that 
gorgeous green color under there. So I'm gonna take a pencil brush and top that with that green color. It gives almost a shimmery effect under the eye. I rarely ever put shimmers under my eye, but I really like that. I'm gonna go in with that Highlight 01 for my inner corner and brow bone highlight. Because that like white shimmery color in the palette is, is too chunky for inner corner and brow bone, in my opinion. So this is just gonna brighten it up more so than give a ton of shimmer, which is okay. I'm going to spray with my Algenist Splash Hydrating Setting Mist. And I'm gonna do my mascara. I do not have a Laura Mercier mascara. I honestly have never tried one. Let me know if you have. Can't get away from my Bare Minerals lately. Even loving the Thrive, I still can't stop with the Bare Minerals. So I'm gonna do that off camera and I'll be right back. Okay, so now that mascara is done, I'm gonna do lips. Um, I don't have any lipsticks from Laura Mercier. I feel like I've tried some way back when and I really liked them. I just have not purchased any more. So again, if you have any favorite colors of lipsticks from Laura Mercier, let me know. I do have some glosses. I have this one called Baby Doll. It's the Lip Glacé. And I love it because it's, it's a pink, but it's not overly pink. And I'm not going to put a lipstick underneath it because I have put foundation on my lips. And I do like the color of this gloss so much that I want it to shine through. These are not near as sticky as a lot of other glosses that I have in my collection. And I like how the color shows through of these, where some other glosses look like they have a color in the tube and then they you put them on the lips and they're like, it's just a gloss, it's a clear gloss, where's the color? I feel like you can actually see the color on this and I really like it. I feel like it's opaque enough to show through, but still natural enough to be considered a gloss. So that is the finished look. My full face using Laura Mercier products. So again, as I went through, I told you I didn't have some stuff. If some of the stuff I didn't have, you do have or have had and love, be sure and let me know. Um, and just let me know if you have a favorite Laura Mercier product in general, what is it down in the comment section below. As always, thank y'all so much for watching. I have two more full faces coming your way in the next couple of months, so stay tuned for that. And I hope you all go out and have a very blessed day.